All right. With that, then, Mr. McKeska, would you please begin the announcements? Yes, Judge. Drake McKeska, attorney for the department. Uh, Ms. Peterman? Ashley Peterman, investigator for Child Protective Services. Jimmy Dresden Mitchell, investigation supervisor. Lucinda Mance for the month of the father, excuse me. Um, he is President Brent Johnston, or rather alleged father judge. Cecilia Howling on behalf of the mother, um, Maria Rosenthal. She is not present, but I am ready. Maureen Giannis, attorney at Lightham for the child. Ready, Judge. Christine Grone, Child Protective Investigation Investigator. Soldi Rapson, Hill Country Casa, Guardian at Lightham Supervisor, and uh, Deborah Ryan. Also here, I can't show. Hill Country Casa Volunteer, Deborah Ryan. Anybody else that needs to announce? Mr. Johnston, did you unmute and announce, please? Yes, sir. I'm here. Would you state your full name, please? Brian Carlton Johnston. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. We are here and set for an adversary hearing. My understanding is the parties were conferring. Were you able to reach an agreement? We were, Judge. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and set forth the terms and conditions of that agreement at this time, Mr. McKeska? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Judge, the parties have agreed uh, that the department will be named as the temporary mansion conservator of the child, uh, and that the parents will be named as the temporary possessory conservator of the child. Uh, we've also agreed um, to submit an, a standalone order um, for genetic testing of the child and the alleged father, Mr. Johnston, to establish paternity. We're asking the court to defer child support and medical support until further order of the court. And we're asking the court to order the parties to a family group conference uh, to develop family plans of service that are narrowly tailored to address the reasons for removal in this case. Uh, the parties have agreed for the department to request and conduct an expedited home study on the home of Kenitha Johnston, um, who is the um, alleged paternal aunt. It's Mr. Johnston's sister. Um, and then uh, Judy Johnston, who is the uh, Mr. Johnston's mother. They do reside together um, to do a home study for potential placement into that home. Uh, and then in addition to that judge, we've agreed that each parent will have uh, visitation uh, for one hour per week um, supervised by um, the department or an approved individual. Do we have service on both mother and Mr. Johnson? We do, Judge. Um, Ms. Rosenthal signed and executed a waiver of service on November 10th. Uh, that was filed on November 13th. And then Mr. Johnson was personally served on November 13th, both of 2023. Okay, thank you. Ms. Palrung, is this your understanding of the agreement? It is, Your Honor. There is another name that my um, client had put forth in case there were any issues with the home study with Kenitha Johnston. Um, she wanted uh, Heather Donahue to be um, studied in the alternative. Um, obviously, um, we would move forward with uh, Ms. Johnston's home study, and that follow-up would only happen if the home study were denied. Thank you. Ms. Mance, is this your understanding of the agreement? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Ms. Giannis? Yes, it is, Judge. Ms. Rapson? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And Mr. Johnston, did you hear everything that Mr. McKeska stated yes, as far as the terms and conditions of agreement? Yes, sir. Is this the agreement you made? Yes, sir. 
you had an opportunity to discuss it with your attorney, Ms. Mance? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Do you have uh, a full understanding of what the agreement requires of you? Yes, that they want me to go through their 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 actual plan that they have set forth for services to in order for me to be able to have visitation with my child and then potentially get my child back. Okay. Um, were you forced into this agreement in any way? No, sir. Were you made any promises or guarantees to get you to agree to it? No, sir. All right. There, asked- there's only a few questionable or, or concernable things with the things that are in the affidavit that are not true that I've had concern with that I needed to speak with either the CPS director about or whatever, because those were not a lot of the things that were put in there were not my words or were not actual factual things that were put in there. Well, let me make a distinction for you just so you can understand what we're doing right now. By agreeing to this agreement, you're not necessarily agreeing to everything that was in the affidavit. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. So I understand that you have issues with some of the allegations or facts in the affidavit. However, at this time, are you voluntarily agreeing to this agreement despite those differences? Yes, sir. Okay. And then, Miss Hellrung, you have authority from your client? Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. Okay. Um, Miss Peterman, you did the affidavit in this case, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Are all the facts and circumstances that you alleged in your affidavit true and correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes, sir. Okay. And you believe that this agreement is in the best interest of the children or the child? Yes, sir. Okay. And you believe that the current placement of the child is safe and appropriate? Yes, sir. Okay. Do all the parties stipulate as to the reasonable efforts in the affidavit? Yes, Yes, Judge. Yes, Judge. All right. Based on the agreement of the parties and the announcements of the attorneys, court will find that all parties entitled to citation notice were duly cited to serve. Court finds that they're based on the testimony of Ms. Peterman and the stipulation of the parties as to reasonable efforts. The court finds there's sufficient evidence to satisfy a person of ordinary prudence and caution that there was a danger to the physical health or safety of the child caused by an act or failure to act of the person entitled to possession for the child to remain in the home is contrary to the welfare of the child. The urgent need for protection required the immediate removal of the child and reasonable efforts consistent with the circumstances and providing for the safety of the child were made to eliminate or prevent the child's removal and reasonable efforts have been made to enable the child to return home. But there's a substantial risk of a continuing danger if the child is returned home. Ms. Peterman, there's no Indian child heritage in this suit. Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. Um, court will adopt and approve the agreement of the parties for the Department of Family and Protective Services to be named as the temporary managing conservator of the child, for the parents to be temporary possessory conservators of the child, and court orders a standalone order for the child to have a DNA test, uh, as well as Mr. Johnston to submit to that DNA test. Court will defer medical support and child support at this time. I'm gonna order the parties to conduct a family group conference to develop family plans of service that are narrowly tailored to address the concerns that brought the child into the care of the department. Court will order an expedited home study on Kenitha Johnston and Judy Johnston and uh, a backup home study on Heather Donahue if the home study on Kenitha and Judy is denied. Court orders that visitation will be one hour per week per parent supervised by the department or some other approved individual. And our next hearing will be our status hearing. 
December 20th, 2023 at 9.30. December 20th, 2023 at 9.30. I have to admonish the parents that the state of Texas gives parents and CPS cases 12 months to demonstrate that you can provide a safe, stable, violence and drug-free home for your child. In the event you cannot do so, your rights to your child are subject to further restriction as they are now or termination. Mr. McCaskill, is there anything I've failed to address? No, Your Honor. Okay. I, I think the only other thing I need to talk about real quick is um, placement information. What is the county of placement at this time, Ms. Peterman? It is Kirk County. Okay. And what kind of placement is it? It is a foster home. Okay. What date was the child placed in that home? November 9th, 2023. Mr. Johnston, at this time, you have an appointed attorney because we do conditional appointments, but I do have to ask you a few questions. Do you currently have an income? Yes, I, I'm self-employed, but I run a skid steer for a buddy of mine. We went into business together, so... Okay. Do you, um, excuse me, are you able to afford an attorney to represent you in this suit? Um, I'm pretty sure I could, but during the colder months, like as of right now, it slows down, work slows down. So then I run an endo. And at the moment, we're like, I'm working today, but I wasn't working yesterday and the day before. We got a call to drop off a little gravel. So, okay. So, let me ask you this. Do you own or do you rent your home? Uh, I rent. Okay. Do you own or do you uh, do you own a vehicle? And if so, do you have a payment on that vehicle? I do not own a vehicle. All right. So what do you do for transportation? Um, my license is suspended for two years. All right. So how do you get around for your business? Um, the friend of mine that I am in business with is who I live with. Okay. And do you have, do you, you pay rent, you pay other bills throughout the month? I uh, pay him rent, I pay him water and electricity, part of the water and electricity. I also pay phone, food. When you're done paying all those bills at the end of the month, do you have money left over to pay for an attorney? Yes, sir. How much do you have left over to pay for an attorney at the end of each month? Um, I would have to sit down and get everything together and figure out exactly how much so that's like i said as of right now we're in between because of the cold months and it just depends on how much work's coming in or as you have we both okay i understand that do you have any money saved no sir do you have anything that you could sell that you could use to pay for an attorney um no sir i just went through one my driver's license court and did best paid restitution for that i stole the motorcycle that i had Okay. And then do, I still you, have four days do you receive any type of governmental assistance? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, based on the answers to the questions that I've asked at this time, I'm going to maintain your indigency status and yes, continue to have Miss Mance represent you. We'll review it in the future, but at this time, I will find that you're indigent. Um, as far as your client, Miss Helrong, do you have any information that would help me make an indigency? Your Honor, I believe when they filed the waiver, they also filed an affidavit of indigency completed by my client. And I believe that was done by Ms. Peters Peterman. Is is that correct, Ashley? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so nothing has changed since she filled out that indigency affidavit? As far as I'm aware, no, she is um, she is scheduled to go into inpatient treatment. Okay, I'll maintain her indigency then and maintain your appointment. Okay, Mr. McKeska, anything else? No, you're on. Okay, thank you all for your time and your service. Mr. Johnson, good luck to you. And if nothing further, all parties are excused. Protective Services thank versus you. Alexis you, Sutton Dr. and Joshua Gomez in the 198 Judicial District Court of Kirk County. Mr. McKeska, uh, excuse me. Who's hearing this case from Gillespie County? Is there any objection? No objection. No objection, no objection Your Honor. No objection. Okay. All right. Then with that, Mr. McKeska, would you please begin the announcements? Uh, yes, Judge. Drake McKeska, attorney for the department. 
Taylor Gonzalez, family-based caseworker. Maureen Giannis, uh, attorney at Lydon for the mother. Alexis. Connection's not great. Ah. Uh, De Deborah Fuller, Your Honor, I'm the attorney for Joshua Gomez. I'm here uh, with Mr. McKessia because my hotspot wasn't working. Um, Mr. Gomez, could you announce? Yes, ma'am. I'm Joshua Gomez. I'm here. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Irene Acosta for the child, Judge. Miss Sutton, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, can you announce for me, please? State your name. Uh, she keeps freezing up. I'll take judicial notice that she's present. Um, all right, anyone who's not an attorney or will be giving testimony, please raise your right hand. All right, thank you. So, all right, we're here for court order services case. Uh, attorneys have had an opportunity to confer. Um, what say the parties? Uh, Judge, I believe we have an agreement. Okay. Um, why don't we start with the terms and conditions of the agreement? Yes, Judge. It's my understanding that the parents have agreed uh, to complete the following services. Um, both um, mother and father will complete a drug and alcohol assessment and follow the recommendations. They will complete random drug testing for the department to include UAs and hair testing uh, and oral swab testing. Uh, they will complete, uh, or mom, Miss Sutton, will complete a domestic violence victims class, um, and uh, Mr. Gomez will complete a batterer's intervention program. Um, both parents will attend individual therapy, uh, and then both parents will complete an in-home parenting program. Uh, and then the standard um, sign the parents will sign the necessary releases, maintain communication with the department, um, and follow the, the safety plans created for the case. Um, the um, so just the parties would also agree, um, that after the, the current protective order is lifted, um, Mr. Gomez would have supervised visits with the child, um, and those visits would be supervised by either the department or an approved um, uh, approved supervisor. And then, sorry, I meant to also include the parents will follow any recommendations made by their service providers. Ms. Giannis, is that your understanding of the agreement? It is, Your Honor. Uh, the only issue is the supervised visits after the protective order. My client is asking that his mother or grandmother be the supervisor for the visits and not the maternal uh, great grandparents. And so we want that on the record today. That that's who he's asking uh, to supervise. Say who that is again. The name. Uh, the names are Joan Perez or Megan Smith. Okay. Miss Giannis, is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, Judge, it is. And Miss Acosta? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Sutton, did you make this agreement voluntarily? Yes. Did you have the opportunity to discuss it with Ms. Giannis? Um, no, I don't. I had talked to her the, uh, yesterday, I think it was. Okay. Did you, the about, two of you talk about your case? Yes. Did you talk about services? Um, I think we did kind of talk. I think so. Okay. Are you comfortable moving forward with this agreement? Yes. And, all right. So you're asking the court... To approve this agreement and you're saying you had, you're agreeing to it voluntarily yes and you weren't forced in any way to agree to it no okay um mr gomez same questions for you uh, is this your understanding of the agreement yes sir <clears throat> and you, you're agreeing to this voluntarily yes sir you understand what's that. expected of you pardon say that again do you understand what's expected of you yes sir and 
Did you have an opportunity to discuss this agreement with Ms. Fuller? Yes, sir, I did. Did you enter into this agreement voluntarily? Yes, sir. Were you forced in any way to agree to it? No, sir, I wasn't. <clears throat> Made any promises or guarantees to get you to agree to it? No, sir, nothing like that. Okay. All right, then. Um, Ms. Gonzalez, are all the facts and circumstances that are alleged in your affidavit, to the best of your knowledge, true and correct? Yes, Judge. Okay. And do you believe that this agreement is in the best interest of the children? Yes, sir. And do you believe that um, it's necessary for the court to order these services to address any concerns of abuse or neglect? I do. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything further from anyone else? No, sir. Just if after the protective order is lifted, if the parties can provide um i guess dates and times when the child will be having visits with the father so the parties are aware and said that i'm aware of when he'll be exercising the visitation you want just a staffing yes that would help okay All right, then, for the purposes of the court order services case, pursuant to Chapter 264-203 of the Texas Family Code, the court approves the agreement of the parties, and the court finds that a parent or managing conservator, excuse me, let me rephrase that. That there was a continuing danger to the physical health or safety of the child or the substantial risk of abuse or neglect caused by the parent in this case. And in order to alleviate those concerns, the court orders these services and finds that they're in the best interest of the child. Court orders the parties, parents, excuse me, to complete a drug and alcohol assessment and follow the recommendations complete random drug testing, including UAs and oral swab or hair testing. Court orders Ms. Sutton to complete a domestic violent, violence victims class and for Mr. Gomez to complete a batter's intervention course. Court finds they are also to can participate in parenting and therapy, maintain communication with the department, and follow any of the safety plans created for this case. Once the protective order is lifted, Mr. Gomez may have supervised visitation with the child to be supervised either by the department or by an approved supervisor. And the court takes uh, notes rather that Mr. Gomez would prefer the supervisor to be Joan Perez or Megan Smith. So what's going to have to happen there is Mr. Gomez is they're going to have to be vetted. There's going to have to be a check into their background to make sure that they can be an approved supervisor. Yes, sir. So by making this order today, not guaranteeing you that one of them is going to be the supervisor. It's just they're they're I'm ordering that they be checked to see if they can be. Yes, sir. All right. Um our compliance hearing on this case is going to be February the 7th, 2024 at two. That's February 7th, 2024 at two. All righty. And then um uh, I'll start with you, Miss Sutton. Do you currently have the funds available to you to pay for an attorney to represent you in this case? I do not. Do you have anything saved up that you could sell that would allow you? I do not. Okay. And um, do you <clears throat> receive any type of governmental assistance? Uh, I have Medicaid. And that's it. Okay. Then for the purposes of this suit, the court will find that you are indigent and maintain... Ms. Giannis as your attorney. And then Mr. Gomez, do you have the funds available to you to hire an attorney? Uh, No, sir, not really. But if I were able to make a payment plan, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to comply with that. Okay. Do you at this time receive any governmental assistance? No, sir. All right. Uh, are you working? Uh, Yes, sir. I do under the table work like uh, construction. When you're done paying all your bills, 
Do you have any money left over to pay for an attorney at the end of the month? Uh, yes, sir. You do? Yes, sir. Very little, though. So if I were able to make a payment plan, I'd be able to make it work. Okay. Well, at this time, I'm going to find that you're indigent and maintain the fuller of your attorney in this case. We'll look at it again in the future. All okay. right. Anything I failed to address? No, sir. All right. Our next hearing, again, is a compliance hearing on February the 7th, 2024. And that's going to be at 2 p.m. February the 7th, 2024 at 2 p.m. All Miss Sutton and Mr. Gomez, I want to make sure you understand that these court ordered services are to alleviate the effects of abuse or neglect without having to remove the children and change the conservatorship, which is yes, very sir. invasive. So I'm encouraging you to both take this case very seriously so that it doesn't progress to the next level. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And Miss Sutton, I don't know for sure, but it would appear that you might be wearing pajamas. And next time you come to court, I need you to be dressed appropriately for court. Okay. Okay. I'm going to let it slide this time. Next time I need you to be dressed appropriately for court for me. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. That'll be all. Thank all right. you all for yes, your sir. time and your service. All parties yes, are excused. Thank you, Josh.